you're contributing and that you were appreciated for contributing. You understand? So it's, that's the reality. The system isn't going to break down if everybody was rich. That's, that's a fact. Okay, prove me wrong. And explain why we've been going the other directions, even though we've always had a willing workforce in America. Why we've been going the other direction by increasing poverty, not giving commensurate cost of living adjustments to minimum wage workers. You think this is incompetence by accident, incidental, a happenstance, a fluke? No, this is, this is deliberation. This is diabolical deliberation, okay, from on high, that critical mass of evildoers that are steering the ship of fools. Okay, they know what they're doing. So they're keeping us poor on purpose, okay? And they don't want to talk about, you know, and that puzzles anybody. Why won't they talk about disruptive technology? Well, what is it disruptive to? That's a vague term. It's How does it disrupt? What do you mean? Qualify that, quantify that, elaborate. Well, it's disruptive to the profits of the oil companies. If you could put a unit under the hood of your car, suddenly you were able to just stick water in your gas tank and you'd get 100 miles to a gallon of water because it's, producing hydrogen on demand, um, that's going to be a little upsetting to the oil companies when all they can sell in terms of their oil is to lubricate your motor. You, you get it? That's how what it disrupts. It's disruptive to the current economic status quo, which has failed, utterly failed. So I, you can't refute the stuff I'm saying. So I just want everybody to know that there's no way you can blame incompetence or anything else. Okay, this is... This has all been done on purpose, okay? The poverty increasing, the destruction of the worth of the currency, the currency debasement through not giving commensurate cost of living adjustments to workers, minimum wage workers who are, whose jobs are imperative to the welfare of society. <laughs> and they know what they're doing. They had to do this because that would have acted like a check and balance, okay? Because employers would have rightfully complained. They would have said, well, what's going on here? Where's the disruption in the supply chain that's causing me to buy law? I have to give my workers more money. And then they would bring it up. Then they would complain, you see? And it would stop the thing in its tracks. Who The thing, the market manipulators that are colluding to fix prices. Do you understand? These special interest groups that collude, that have an interest, that have a motivation, that have an incentive to manipulate markets upwards for their benefit, to tip the scale in their favor, in other words. So it becomes glaringly obvious. We point the finger at the proper culprits. Don't blame the low-hanging fruit, which is the effect, which is ever-increasing poor people, okay, and the need for welfare, again. So all these people are going to be laid off. We got, If you got rid of desperate poverty, the welfare industrial complex would collapse. All those social workers right now that are employed on tax dollars, right, government money, your money, my money, okay, that pay for these workers, and then all the people in law enforcement because crime plummeted, so the jailers and the judges, court clerks and bail bonds and attorneys, on and on, they're laid off in mass and droves because they're rendered irrelevant because there's, you know, they need crime to be relevant in that industry, and in the social welfare industry, you need desperate poverty to be relevant. Then the financial services industry, the lending, okay, uh, they'd go belly up. 25% of Americans, some 25%, are purportedly uh, employed to some capacity in the financial services industry. So they go belly up. Nobody's borrowing money. Nobody's poor. Nobody needs it because everybody's got more numbers. Everybody's got the, the worth of the numbers keeps increasing are naturally, automatically, organically because we had true capitalism at work, true free market supply and demand principles at work. Do you understand how it would work? So... People that try to tell you that the problems are unsolvable are liars. The problem they don't want. Evil people do not want the problem solved. And then people could ask me, say, well, why would you want the problem solved? And all those people unemployed, well, you're so mean. You know, it's just, no, I'm, I'm tired of it. I want to play hardball, okay? I want to cut to the chase. I want to get crazy. No more playing tiddlywinks. I want to call your bluff, okay? And you know what? There are solutions. The dubious wars. It could get. You understand the implications here. How about the bloodshed? Does it get worse than that? Does it get worse than dubious war? Children, innocent women and children, innocent people are dying in these dubious wars. We got 20 troops a day, some 20 veterans a day, taking their own lives because of whatever the hell happened going off to these wars, 
that are dubious at best. Uh, we shouldn't be over there, and there's a lot of people profiting. You understand? They're relevant when there's war. They're irrelevant when there's not. So in order to be relevant, they've got to have war, dubious or otherwise. So the theft has occurred in America. We're down the rabbit hole to hell very far. The ship of fools is way, well on its way to careening to utter destruction on the rocks, okay? I think it's already there, just that people, the momentum hasn't caught up yet. It's sort of like a big, long limousine that we're all in. And the people, a lot of people have already felt the crash as it hit the brick wall, okay? But at the, at the very back of the limousine, they haven't felt it yet, but it's coming. You know, it's just, you know, time lapse. And it's coming, but we're all going to feel it. I mean, we're in a lot of trouble, my friends. And you know what? God is our only hope. It's our only hope. And all you can do, you know, you can lead a horse to water. You can bring him the truth, the irrefutable facts. Be willing to do the math with them. Show me. So what was the buying power of a minimum wage job? Fifty-five. Well, let's go online. Let's look together. Here. Let's do some research. And what could you buy with that? What, what was a house? You know, what was a low-end, medium-price house? So could I live a middle-class life even if it was low-end, humble, and support my family? I, yeah, that's true. You could do the research and you could find out. It's all true. So a dollar an hour would do that for you. That was minimum wage by law. It was an ethical, moral wage so that everybody had dignity, okay, because we knew that minimum wage workers were doing jobs that were imperative to the welfare of society. It's all reasonable, and it avoids slavery and unscrupulous employers, so we mandate a law, a rule, a regulation that was protectionism, yes, but, I mean, if you're not for that kind of protectionism, then you're for slavery. How could you not be? You're saying, no, it's, uh, exploitative employers ought to be able to just pay whatever they choose, the peanuts. And a lot of people will take peanuts. It's true. It's a fact. So sweatshops, whatever conditions, as long as I get some crumbs to eat and I get to survive, yeah, I'll, I'll be your slave. That's how they've got away with it over the, these centuries. I mean, what do you think? Okay, so now they've legitimized. It's in your face. The Labor Department, in the pockets of the Federal Reserve Bank, their lapdogs, their sycophants for them, whatever you say, boss, don't give commensurate cost of living adjustments, which could have prevented all this. So we just debase the currency, and we don't give them equivalent cost of living adjustments to compensate for that. And then here we are. And nobody's, nobody's talking about where is it going to, how is this thing going to end? How, how? You tell me how it's going to end. Is inflation forever good and just keep not paying the uh, minimum wage workers a commensurate cost of living adjustment so there's no checks and balances? The employers never start complaining about it as long as they benefit. You see, everybody's looking after old number one, and that's a problem. How do you think they divide us? We've all got the devil in our hearts and souls. It's in the money. Satan is in it. We love money. And it's, 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 it's a danger for everybody. This is the broad path of destruction. Look at it. This is how it happens. This is what's going on. Our hearts are impure. We've got to get on the narrow path, okay, to salvation. Be like little children, innocent. There's not going to be any money in heaven in a perfect world. That's the one we're shooting for here on earth. You call yourself a Christian, then by default, you're an idealist. By default, you believe in full equality. By not believing in inequality at all, your heart is pure. You won't miss the mark. You'll be found worthy and deserving of inheriting a better world. It's as simple as that. However long it takes to get to that ideal world, what it's going to look like, I mean, we can only speculate. We, we can use our God-given imagination. What's it going to be like? There's not going to be anybody suffering unnecessarily, right? I mean, isn't that reasonable to assume? A perfect world. You write down a list, down to the smallest detail. All those things that you would add to a perfect world and all those things you would eliminate. You understand? And money is one of those things fundamentally, foundationally, you got to see it's not there. It's absent. There's going to be nobody there that wants to have an advantage over anybody else. Do you understand? That wants any privilege, okay? That wants to be an elitist, that believes in inequality even a little. They're all the way in. Okay, that's how you're going to make it. That's how I'm going to make it. And we're going to tell that to other people. We're going to say, prepare for the world of tomorrow. And this is how. Be prepared. That's a huge departure from this world where it's all about money. We all are forced to pay a cost of living tax to survive, to continue to exist. Who can refute that? Nobody. It's a matter of fact. 